Welcome back everyone, Nat Throws back on the scene, and I am here to continue where I left off on a complete history of World War I and Country Balls by Freeze Pond. I loved the first part, and so, let's continue with this. Simplified, they are as followed. Section One, reasons why. there will be no secret treaties. If two or more countries have to agree to something, you bet everybody else is going to know they agreed to it. Section Two. Freedom of Fair access enough. to the sea, whether during times of peace or times of war. Essentially, this is a discreet way of telling Germany that sinking everybody's boats in international <laughs> water was not a very nice thing to do. Yeah, Section for three, real. The establishment of free trade. You can probably imagine mm. that people would stop selling guns to each other if they knew that the buyer was going to use the guns on them. The economic immobility Good that point. took place during World War I also restricted a lot of trade of food. Because of this, there is a pretty significant mm. famine everywhere. Section 4. The provokers of this war will have their armies dulled down to use defense forces. Of course, it isn't totally necessary to spend more than 10% of your entire gross domestic product just to build more killing machines, right? Section 5. The Empire's colonial claims will be adjusted, or in other terms, the Allies are going to take the Central Powers colonies for themselves. These will be administered in what are called mandates later. Okay, yeah, so as I mentioned, there was a lot of fighting going on in Africa as well um, because it was all colonized by, by European countries. And also, quite a few people from Africa um, actually also went to Europe um, to go fight for said countries. And as I said, there was also some fighting um, done in Asia. So, yep, looks like he's going to touch up on it. Section 6, the Russian territories will be evacuated, and afterwards, everyone will let Russia decide their own fate in the ongoing civil war. Unfortunately. <laughs> Section 7, Germany, seriously, get out of Belgium, that's illegal. Section 8, Germany should probably also get out of France. About 50 the years no -no prior to this war, <laughs> Germany had taken over Alsace-Lorraine. France was mm. mad and so was everybody else, apparently. Section 9, Italy will be adjusted so that anyone deemed an Italian will be within their borders. This mainly concerns Austria-Hungary, but surprisingly not San Marino. Section 10, Austria-Hungary, the beautiful patchwork of different languages and ethnicities, is to let all these other ethnicities decide what they want to do for themselves. Or in freedom terms, we'll give them independence. Section 11, Romania, Serbia, and Montenegro are to be got out of by the Central Powers and have their stolen territories given back to them. Serbia will be given free, undisturbed access to the sea, Balkans will be organized along lines of national allegiance, and independence will be guaranteed for all of them. Nice job. Section 12, the Ottoman Empire oh, will be God. partitioned along lines of ethnicity. The Turkish majority oh, portion will be given independence as its own Turkish nation, while other ethnicities will be given the right to decide and rule amongst themselves. Just like Kurdistan, I'm sure. This section also promises that the Turkish Straits will be internationally administered and will be open to anybody sailing through. Section 13. Hmm. A Polish state will be given independence in areas that are undeniably majority Polish. They will also be given access to the sea and a promise of undisturbed independence. Okay, so that Polish corridor created so much animosity within Germany. Um, the fact that it was split into two parts, you know, it was like Germany and then of course there was the Polish corridor and then like a small piece of Germany... Um, was uh, separated from the mainland and i know hitler at one point asked for it back and after they refused you know that's when the invasion of poland happened and but anyway that's <laughs> that's a story for another time oh if only they could predict the future <laughs> and finally, section 14 the league of nations will be formed as an organization oh, made up of great powers who will assure that everyone will be able to Fuck. maintain their independence and that generally stuff gets enforced even though the United States has made a pretty confident statement about the future of the world, the Central Powers still kept at it. After spending most of 1918 trying to secure the land that fell off the Russian Empire, the US had already deployed to France and began driving the Germans out. On the last day of September 1918, Bulgaria surrenders. On the last day of October of the same year, and the Ottomans lay down their arms. The 3rd of November, and austria hungary recoils in fear as they are attacked from all sides. End of November 11th, Germany is finished. And thus, a victory was secured for the Allies. Surely this can't be the end, can it? Do mm. not worry, because at least 17 million people did not die for no reason. The world is going to look a whole lot different from now on. So now let's look at how Europe will be reshaped. First we'll look at Austria-Hungary, which went from a beautiful stained glass window to a harmful, bloody, and ugly pointy mess of broken glass. First of all, the land that's inhabited by Czechs and Slovaks is given independence, forming Czechoslovakia. Second, Serbia and Montenegro unite, and further annex what is known today as Bosnia, Croatia, Slovenia, and Vojvod... Vo 
this thing to form what is familiar to many as the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Hell oh, yeah. Trentino was ceded to Italy, of course, because it's pretty easy to deem the people there Italians. Transylvania was ceded to Romania, and from then on, vampires became a Romanian <laughs> stereotype again. Galicia, which is inhabited by many Poles, was ceded to the not yet complete Polish Republic. Finally, of course, the kingdoms of Austria and Hungary are now two separate entities. Split. Now into Bulgaria, they were able to hold on to their Serbian land for the duration of the war, but now they're forced to give it back. To Greece, they lost their direct access to the Aegean Sea. They were also required to shrink their absurdly large military down to a size of just 20,000 men, and pay for the, all the stuff they broke. And yes, they did break Serbia. So guess who's getting all the money? The Ottomans' fate was not entirely sealed until a few years after the war. An Armenian state was given independence, while Egypt, Palestine, Jordan, Iraq, and Kuwait were given to the British, and Lebanon and Syria were given to the French. Greece, France, the UK, and Armenia attempted to wrestle down the Ottomans for the next couple of years until they eventually settled and formed the modern-day Turkey. And for whatever reason, there's still no Kurdistan. Quick fun fact, it was proposed to see Armenia to the United States as a mandate, but this idea was denied by the Senate, all for the sake of the democracy. Oh. oh, wow. Huh, I didn't know that part. And to think after all this, like, dividing and... and uh, carving up the land that everything would change <laughs> again just a couple of decades later you know during world war ii yeah little did people know it was far from over pose and now for germany who for whatever reason everybody thinks started the war their polish land of course <laughs> yeah. is given to the newly established polish state Poland is also given access to the sea through the polish corridor this among many other things becomes very controversial mm. later some land a bit south of this is ceded to czechoslovakia Okay, so he wrote there why World War II happened, but there's so many things that that led to the events of, of World War II. Um, but yeah, that that was definitely a definitely a contributing factor. Who also really recently emerged. The region of Alsace Lorraine has returned to France after it was taken from them in an earlier conflict. Germany also ceded Memel to France, a region near Lithuania, but later on, Lithuania took it from them because it makes sense. Balkanization. To Denmark, northern Schleswig was ceded, despite them not doing much the entire time. <laughs> the city of Danzig, near East Prussia, was given independence as a free city-state. To Belgium, who so sadly stepped on, received the regions of Oypen and Malmedy, and we're still not done. Far away across the ocean, or more specifically in Africa, the German colonies of Tanzania and Namibia are both given to Britain, Cameroon and Togo were split between the France and the UK, and the regions that are today known as Rwanda and Burundi were given to Belgium. But I'm still not done! In the Pacific, Japan, who honestly was just here to make a oh, profit, there you go. gains Germany's <laughs> Pacific holdings above the equator, plus a small colony that used to be part of China. Mm. German Samoa was given to New Zealand, who at the time was still under British control, mm. and the rest was given to Australia, who was also a British subject. Back into Europe for a moment, Germany's military was stripped of all things unnecessary for defending themselves. They were also required to remove military presence from the area west of the Rhine River. The area captured from what used to be the Russian Empire was to be returned, but since Russia doesn't exactly exist right now, the areas are evacuated and eventually chaos sweeps back into them. Finally, the last salt covered nail in the open wooden coffin, Germany is now required to pay 132 billion marks, which in today's money is about 442 billion dollars. Even though the treaties were set in stone and managed to please most of the Allies, there are still millions of people who are overall not happy since the conclusion of the war. Bulgaria lost even more, Germany had fallen, and now Austria and Hungary are weakened on their own. But even then, Italy still is a bit picky with what they earned after fighting. Soon enough, someone hmm. way too out of his mind is going to show up and try to recreate the Roman Empire. This was a very controversial treaty, and if you can't tell, Germany lost a bit too much for their own good. Their economy falls, and the German people yeah. are now angrier than ever before. They are starting to feel separated from each other after losing swaths of land. As the years progress through the quite literally depressing interwar period, Germany seeks to restore its glory. We'll give Europe until the 1930s before some Austrian painter comes to power and decides mm -hmm. to make his dream come true. Okay, so he's, he's obviously referring to... To World War II, and of course, with Italy, he was referring to uh, Benito Mussolini, and it's it's kind of strange because during World War II, uh, Italy was allied with Germany. Um, in Italy's case, they were one of the winners of World War One, but their motivation for like doing what they did in, during the events of World War II was unsatisfied with what they got. Whereas Germany, Germany's motivation of doing for what they did partly was like was due to how much they lost during uh, world war one you know what i mean so it was like talk about different motivations <laughs> for them to be allies but anyway until then enjoy how relatively clean this map of europe looks it'll get even messier in the next 20 to 30 years yeah
So what lesson can we even learn from this? We cannot pin the blame on just one side exactly, and it's not like there is an obvious bad guys and good guys, at least not in continental Europe. Rather, the blame will be pinned on the main causes. M standing for militarism. Everyone was militarized, let's be honest. Mm. Everyone constantly had their armies fully armed and ready, and were about ready to snap at each other in any moment. A standing for alliances. Regardless of whether or not people thought assassinating Archduke Franz Ferdinand was such a brilliant <laughs> idea, Russia only came to Serbia's aid because they had already established that they were good friends with each other. It isn't like Germany hated anybody either. They had only decided they needed to support Austria-Hungary because they had made an alliance with them. Mm. I standing for imperialism. Europe was getting crowded, but everyone still wanted to take stuff over. This applied to everyone. Italy liked taking over the Mediterranean, France and Britain liked taking over Africa, Serbia liked taking over the Serbs, and so did Bulgaria. Everyone was bound to take over something at some point. And standing for nationalism. Mostly this can be traced back to the one guy Gavril Princip. He had the plan to make a point of uniting all the Serbs by killing Franz Ferdinand, but of course, Bulgaria had essentially the same idea in mind, which is what drove them to beat the tar out of Serbia. Mm. Now that we know that not one side in particular was to blame for these four years of everybody dying, is there still any lesson we can learn besides overall not being a militarized, allied, imperialist nationalist? Well, there is one, and it applies anywhere. Just stop killing each other, it helps! <laughs> yeah, that's... Definitely a good point. <laughs> Cause. All right, so that was a complete history of World War One and Country Balls by Freeze Pond, and it was damn good. I loved the animation. Um, I loved the music used, um, and yeah, it was very knowledgeable. I'm wondering if he has a World War Two one. Let me let me check. Okay, so after looking through his channel, it appears that he's still in the process of making the second one, um, but that's definitely something to look forward to. In the future but uh anyway that is all the time i have for this video guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this please don't forget to like subscribe show some love in the comments below please do all that good stuff as usual please keep giving me suggestions and i will see you all in the next video guys peace out